starts right now. They've asked for help. Now the city of San Antonio is stepping in to make improvements along the St. Mary's Strip. The promises made and why they're being met with some skepticism tonight. Giving thanks while mourning those lost in Uvalde. How the tragedy at Rob Elementary is being felt almost six months later as the community comes together for Thanksgiving. And a strong start to the holiday travel season. What drivers and flyers are dealing with as millions travel for the Thanksgiving holiday. But first. You know, tonight for many travelers, the goal is pretty much the same, and that is to get to their turkey dinner destinations. And no matter how you travel, the weather could be a friend or a foe. Yeah, or both in one day. There have been waterworks here in and around San Antonio since the past weekend. Adam Kasky joins us now. Adam, for those who are about to take off to see family and friends either waiting for them to arrive or going to hit the road. What can we expect tonight and in the morning? Well, reduce visibility for one road spray. You're going to need your windshield wipers because visibility is dropping quickly out there, and this is going to last through about the first half of the day tomorrow. You take a look at the radar currently, and there's more drizzle and sprinkle action than there's actual rain, but we do have a few real showers right now moving through Stockdale as we speak. Seguin, you're on deck to get another one. This one's headed right for you. This will drop probably a few hundredths of an inch of rain, maybe up to a tenth of an inch as it moves into town. These are very widely separated, but what we're all feeling is the fog and the drizzle and the mist and dampness out there and also a few lingering showers right now near Pipe Creek and all the way up into parts of Kendall County. I want to show you something here. Here's a live camera at the overlooking the airport and you can't even see the runway or the control tower visibility down to two miles at the airport with the drizzle and light sprinkle activity and visibilities are going to drop even more through the night. So travel tomorrow morning on the roadways, anticipate some delays and issues out there. Here's our future cast for visibility. And as early as 3, 4 a.m., we're going to have visibility half mile, probably less in some situations. And that's going to be the case through the morning hours. And I don't think we're going to see big improvements in the visibility tomorrow until we get closer to noon and combine the fog and the drizzle with some areas of rain. And this is just part of the story for this Thanksgiving weekend. I'll get into the rest, including rain showers and when the sun returns coming right up. Yeah, this is when you need to keep the KSAT weather app handy. Thank you, Adam. You know, weather likely top of mind for the millions of Americans traveling this week. An estimated 55 million people expected to travel by car or by plane for Thanksgiving. A lot of them even starting their trips today. Yeah, from boarding times to Bucky's, the night team's Alyssa Cole breaks down the holiday travel scene on the road and in the air. Today, the airport busy with passengers arriving and departing San Antonio. Airports for connecting flights field. And it was horrible. I mean, Chicago is incredible. I mean, there's so many people, so many delays. I mean, but it's good to finally be home. First I was on United, then I was on American Airlines. I got a delay and uh, it was a whole mess. For others, the trip was smooth and easy easy, no delays, um, and I was expecting a lot more people at the airport than there were. A packed Bucky's in New Braunfels also filled with people preparing for long distance travel. I think we plan to spend 60 to $80 just to travel. AAA says the average price of unleaded gas across the state is just under $3 a gallon, but it's not discouraging people from hitting the highways. With all the inflation, not just gas, but other things, it does affect us a lot. So we are kind of debating whether to stay home or to come down, but I mean, we've made the final decision to come see everyone. That was Alyssa Cole reporting. Now the countdown is on for this year's Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner as well. Volunteers have prepped and decorated for tomorrow's event at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. They're just putting together the finishing touches before thousands of people show up. The San Antonio tradition returns in person after the two year pandemic hiatus. Doors open at 9 a.m. tomorrow at the convention center. The food and entertainment runs from 1030 in the morning to 3 p.m. tomorrow. It's free and open to the public. And changes will be made along the St. Mary's Strip today. That's the promise from San Antonio City Councilman Mario Bravo as construction there continues. And that push to improve the pedestrian and business experience is coming hours before a typically big night for bars and clubs. And that's Thanksgiving Eve. But as the night team's John Paul Barajas reports, those who work there say it's not enough. 
The sounds of construction crews are a constant along the St. Mary's Strip. The work still months from completion and not soon enough for struggling businesses. We had an $11 night uh, here recently. I have never experienced it in my uh, 10 or so years working in the bar industry. Rumble bar manager Evan Pinson preferred not to go on camera, but adds driving to the strip and even walking around it is a headache for customers. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo now trying to make the area more pedestrian friendly ahead of potentially large crowds. Well, it's definitely a lot cleaner out here. Uh, what I've seen is there were some uh, some obstacles that were trip hazards that have been removed. While we saw some added orange fencing, customers hanging out at Slackers weren't satisfied. I don't see it happening here. I mean, all this stretch you can see it's, I would assume it's a, it's a fall hazard. My trip, you might fall, there's mud everywhere. Like, what if your girl's in heels? She's gonna fall. Over at Rumble, the manager is appreciative but says it's too little too late. I don't think it is enough given the amount of time. Uh, it is effort, so I will recognize that. There's no historical precedent for that. Um, nonetheless, I have been advocating for that. Um, I've probably asked the city staff, you know, five times, hey, is there some way we can provide economic relief? Jump up. That was John Paul Barajas reporting. Now the councilman tells us he hopes to know more about the potential financial assistance in a week or two. He also said the roads here will be paved once the rainy conditions we've seen come to an end. We'll continue to follow it. An accused arsonist ruined part of the memorial that honors the 53 lives that were tragically lost in a human smuggling operation. Arson investigators in San Antonio arrested 44-year-old Estela Banda for allegedly setting fire to that memorial on Quintana Road. Early yesterday morning, fire crews were called out to that site for what was described as an unauthorized burn. Turned out to be a fire. Investigators said that Banda admitted to setting the fire and said she was, quote, compelled by the Holy Spirit to do so. Six crosses were burned, but they're not going to be gone for long because people have already started putting new ones up. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your night beat news flash. They are thankful he's home. The parents of Eric on two sharing their gratitude and appreciation for prayers for their son being answered. Today, new photos of Eric were released as he continues to recover. One picture shows him standing by his front door. But you can see he still has bandages on his neck and chest. His family says he has a long road ahead of him, but they say they are overjoyed to have him home, especially in time for Thanksgiving. Cantu shot while sitting in his car by a San Antonio police officer who was fired and arrested shortly after. In College Station tonight, organizers of the off-campus student bonfire postponing that event because of weather there. In a statement released on the studentbonfire.com, Organizers say the decision was, quote, incredibly hard to make and a harder one to accept, end quote. The bonfire has been held for more than 20 years as a student, as a student, as an off campus student event following the deadly collapse back in November of 1999. According to the statement in July of this year, the event had to be moved to a new location that presented a challenge. As of right now, there is no information on a new possible date. Also happening in the Brazos Valley, Elizabeth Holmes may find herself as an inmate in that area. A federal judge is recommending that the Theranos founder serve her sentence at a federal prison camp in Bryan. That's according to a court filing. Holmes found guilty of defrauding investors of hundreds of millions of dollars, sentenced to 11 years in prison last week. Holmes, who is pregnant, has been ordered to surrender herself into custody by April 27th. She apparently has Texas ties. She reportedly went to high school in Houston. It'll be up to the U.S. Bureau of Prisons to make the final decision as to where she will serve her time. And that's a look at your night beat news flash. More questions tonight in Virginia, 24 hours after a deadly mass shooting at a Walmart. Six people are dead, including a 16-year-old. At least four others are hurt. Police say the gunman took his own life. The 31-year-old was identified as a team leader for the store's overnight shift. He just opened fire on everybody in the break room, and it is by the grace of God that a bullet missed me. Now, the Chesapeake SWAT team searched the gunman's house earlier today, but investigators haven't released any information yet on a possible motive. The Virginia shooting comes just days after five people were gunned down at a Colorado nightclub. That suspect being held without bond tonight after making their first court appearance today. The 22-year-old's public defender says the suspect is non-binary. 
They are being held on five counts of first degree murder, five counts of committing a bias motivated crime causing bodily injury. Five people died, 17 others hurt in Saturday's shooting at Club Q, a known LGBTQ plus nightclub in Colorado Springs. And back here at home, people gathered to show their support for the Colorado victims and survivors. A vigil held in their honor tonight at the Rainbow Crosswalk along Main Street, right in the heart of San Antonio's gay business district. The Colorado victims' names were all read aloud. Organizers say this vigil also served as a remembrance for all LGBTQ plus victims of discrimination, oppression and hate. Coming up tonight, keeping your family safe during the holidays. What firefighters want you to know before trying to deep fry your turkey. And uniting Uvalde months after tragedy, the event bringing families together at what will be a tough time for so many and the presence that was missing. It's next on the Night Beat. As families sit down to their Thanksgiving meals tomorrow, 21 seats are going to be empty at tables in Uvalde. Six months to the day of the shooting at Rob Elementary. And that loss was certainly felt today as the annual Love Your Uvalde lunch went on without one of its longtime volunteers, the very sweet Jackie Caceres. To be able to say, hey, we're back two years later after, you know, COVID-19 and everything like that, it means the world for, you know, to see the community come out. After two years of only doing home deliveries, the annual Love Ya Uvalde luncheon returned in person for its 39th year. What started as a tradition to feed the elderly now provides free meals to the entire community. It fully relies on volunteers. For nine-year-old Jackie Caceres, it was a can't-miss event. She would serve, she would uh, take usher people to their seats and stuff like that. Uh, she, she was all over the place, you know, she, she did a lot. Jackie was one of the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary six months ago. In light of the shooting, this year's event was almost canceled, but Jackie's family decided to carry on in her honor. We're like, we, we can't stop doing this. You know, there's something that she wanted us you know, to keep on doing, so, so well, here we are. But even with the luncheon success, Jackie's absence was felt. It's an emotional, you know, she'd be up and down this, this place, you know, she's, she's a boss man, a boss lady. Oh, Jackie Caceres, you were so loved. Now, KSAT 12 continues to share the stories of the Rob Elementary victims. And next week, we're going to look back at the last six months. So we invite you to join us for 21 Taken, Uvalde's Path to Healing. That's a special. It's going to air next Friday, December 2nd at 7 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. Remember their names. This Thanksgiving, first responders are issuing a reminder to be cautious in the kitchen and outside when cooking. If your plans for tomorrow's dinner include a deep fried turkey, keep in mind, do not fry it inside your house or the garage. You should be outside in a well ventilated space. We spoke with the captain of the Converse Fire Department who says water on or inside that turkey. One of the main reasons why deep frying a turkey goes so wrong. We want to make sure it's completely thawed and completely as dry as possible. Uh, any water we introduce to that hot oil can cause a grease fire. Captain Cottle says if a fire occurs, get everybody out of the area and call 911. He also stresses not to leave any food cooking on the stove or in the oven unattended. Good advice. All right, now we're going to take a live look. Outside there, Ooh. we're, whoa, can't really Ugh. get much of a view there because it's just dreary and foggy, for 59 degrees out there right now. Adam, put this into perspective for us. We're about to get socked in. We are. Well, we'll be socked in. I mean, within a matter of hours, I think we'll be socked in, and the conditions will just deteriorate on the roads through the night. And that's mainly in terms of visibility. And, of course, you'll have the road spray and the windshield wipers as well. Let's take a look at our headlines. This is going to sum it up for you over the coming days. Thanksgiving damp through at least a noon. We'll get into the specifics in a minute. Friday, rainy. We could see up to two inches in some lucky spots, especially east of town from Friday, from Thursday all the way through Friday night. The weekend, sunny and warmer, but a little windy. As we break down the rain chances, I mean, the fog, the drizzle, that little dampness, the mist in the drizzle, 100% across the board, but actual showers mixing in 60% on Thursday on your Thanksgiving, especially the first half of the day, dropping a bit Thanksgiving night, then ramping up 
to 90% on Friday. Friday's looking like one of those old fashioned rainy days. Numerous widespread rain just coming and going from sunrise to sunset. Yes, there will be breaks in the rain, but I do anticipate it to just keep coming and going throughout the day and lingering on even into Friday night. Here's what we're talking about. Here's the big picture. This swirl in the upper levels near Denver. That's dropping into West Texas. It's going to be really joined by some energy coming in off the Pacific. And this is going to sit over Texas for a few days already out ahead of it with some energy causing these showers from basically Missouri southward down into South Texas. Here's our future cast. I'm going to go slowly here starting at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and don't pay close attention to the exact placement of the showers and even some thunderstorms, just the mere fact that they're popping up and the coverage of the rain, especially as we get into Friday. But Thursday noon, cloudy, gray, still damp. We'll start to see improvements in the visibility. Then as we get into Thursday evening and Thursday night, more fog, more drizzle overnight Thursday into early Friday. And then once we get into Friday, that's when the showers start to become more numerous, more widespread. This is 6 a.m. first thing in the morning. And look how they just continue to come and go, basically touching about every corner of the KSAT 12 viewing area at some point throughout the day. In some of the luckiest locations from Thursday all the way through Friday night, we could have up to two inches of rain. So here's the breakdown for tomorrow. Temperature wise 59 in the morning, 70 in the afternoon. So at least a warmer rain, right? It's going to be warmer than the past several days. Most of the dampness and the reduced visibility up through noon into the afternoon. I don't anticipate as much in terms of the shower activity. So some improvements for road travel. Thursday evening and then Thursday night into Friday morning. Get ready for the showers to pick up again on your Friday. Temperatures will be in the 50s pretty much all day long, near 60 in the morning, but falling into the mid 50s by Friday afternoon and becoming windy with that northeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We get into the weekend Saturday back to some sunshine mid 60s. But a gusty wind up to 35 miles per hour, even higher, I think, in the hill country. So personally, I'm waiting until Sunday to get my Christmas decorations and my Christmas lights up outside. We won't have the wind. We'll have sunshine, low humidity, beautiful day, 74 for the high temperature. So we're really running the gambit here the next several days. Dampness on your Thanksgiving. Most of the heavy rain and more persistent rain will be on Friday. And then that wind picks up Friday into Saturday. But look at that stretch of temperatures back into the mid 70s through about the middle of next week. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, remember when Greg Popovich said the Spurs needed to work on their defense? <laughs> yes. I guess it's not going to happen overnight. No, it's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> they need to really get some practice sessions yeah. in, I think, to be able to practice on this defense because the night the Spurs didn't have much defense at all, too much Zion. He scored a season-high 32 against the Spurs. Plus, Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons is talking bullies and lunch money. Coming up. Spurs are looking to feast on the Pelicans tonight at the AT&T Center. It didn't happen. The Pel scored the first nine points of the game. While the Spurs missed their first eight shots from the floor, Zion Williamson finishes the alley-oop here, and it's 11-2 Pelicans. They led 29-19 after one. Second quarter, San Antonio still playing from behind when Devin Vassell hits a 27-foot three, and it's 55-39 Pelicans. The Spurs trailed 66-47 at halftime. Third quarter, Spurs still fighting from behind. Trey Jones steals the bad pass and goes bounce pass to Vassell for the dunk. Spurs are down 16 and never got much better than that for the Silver and Black who trailed from start to finish and by as many as 27 points. The Pels win 129-110, handing the Spurs their sixth straight loss. You know, I was disappointed to see the way we started out um, because I thought we'd come out a little more ready to play tonight, but it took us a half to get there and um, can't let that happen. You know, as a leader with myself and a few of the other guys, we got to do a better job of really um, you know, relaying that message to, to the younger guys. Up next, the Spurs will host the Lakers Friday night at 7. Now to Josh Primo. Tom Orsborne is reporting that Bear County updated its online court records today to show that former Spurs psychologist Hillary Cawthon dropped her lawsuit against both Primo and the Spurs. Now until today, records only showed she had only dropped her suit against the Spurs. 
touch by Josh Freeman. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Last Sunday, the Cowboys did a great job slowing down the Vikings running attack, holding them to 73 yards and the boys 40 to 3 win. Tomorrow, the run defense will get tested again by Giants running back Saquon Barkley, who's second in the league with 953 yards on the ground. Cowboys' ability to stop the run has been their weakness this season. Star linebacker Micah Parsons says teams trying to run on them is like a bully at school. Once the disrespect is out there, um, you know, people are going to still try you. It's almost like a, a bully trying to take your lunch money every day until you say no, that's enough. They're going to keep taking your lunch money. So I'm at that point where I'm, that's enough. Um, you're not going to keep trying to take my lunch money. Anybody ever take your lunch money in school? No. no <laughs> <laughs> you, you was the bully? Uh, I wasn't the bully. <laughs> wasn't nobody taking my lunch money. I was going to eat somehow. <laughs> In the first meeting of the season, Barkley rushed for 81 yards and a touchdown on the Giants' 23-16 home loss to the Cowboys. The Swiss and Valley Rangers are thankful for their family, friends, and Thanksgiving week football. The 11-1 Rangers are getting ready to play 11-1 full sure in the Class 5A Division I Regional Semifinals this Friday. The Rangers, who advanced to the third round for the first time since 2015, got here by beating Cedar Park in the first round 30-7. And last week, they defeated Manville 38-28. Now it's all about beating the Chargers. I've always wanted to practice on Thanksgiving because you know it's, you're playing for something big and this is the goal and this is another step all the way to state. It's just a privilege and a blessing. Uh, we have a really good team and it's a lot of credit to all of us and just being able to make it this far, but we're not, we haven't gotten what we want yet. Uh, it's special for us. You know, we worked so hard to get to this moment from spring ball all the way to here and uh, we're just ready for it. We worked so hard, so we're ready to go. Smithson Valley and Full Shirt will play Friday at 1 p.m. at Matador Stadium in Seguin. We had another upset at the World Cup in Qatar. Japan, who trailed 1-0, scored two goals in the final 15 minutes, including this one by Takuma Asano in the 83rd minute for the final goal of the match to upset Germany by the final of 2-1 for Japan's first ever win against Germany. Morocco and Croatia finished in a scoreless draw. Spain hammered Costa Rica 7-0, and Belgium beat Canada 1-0. Trinity football will try to knock off the defending champ after the break. Led by head coach Jeremy Urban, the Trinity Tigers will next face Mary Harden Baylor in the second round of the NCAA Division III playoffs. Trinity is coming off its first playoff win since 2002 with a 14-7 home win Saturday against Harden Simmons. Now they'll have to beat the defending champs to open the playoffs by shutting out Huntington College 54-0. They're a good football team. Um, they have a, a very explosive offense. They have a very good defense. They have a good culture. They've been cultivating it for a while now. Um, but just similar to us, um, just putting the building blocks all together. So it should be real fun going against them. They're very, very explosive on offense. They've got tremendous athletes, They're physical up front. Defensively, they fly around to the football. It's not, um, it's extremely rare if you turn on the film, they don't have eight guys around the football. So we're gonna have to play our best football game, but we're excited about the opportunity. Trinity will host Mary Harden Baylor Saturday at noon at Trinity. The Tigers are playing in the second round for the first time since 2002. Thank you, Larry. Yep. And we'll be right back after this. Go Tigers. Drizzly, damp, even some showers coming and going through tonight. Uh, first half of tomorrow at least through Thanksgiving. And then Friday, I think that's when most of the more persistent and kind of steadier, more appreciable rain will, will occur off and on on Friday, uh, basically covering about every corner of the case at 12 uh, viewing area. If you're lucky, you could see up to two inches generally east of San Antonio. Windy Friday, windy Saturday, but this weekend we clear back out. We're in the 60s Saturday and look at Sunday. Inflate the inflatables, Steve Spreister. That'll you, be the yes, day for it. I don't know that I don't know that Stephanie has ever heard your turkey call. Got it. See? Not bad. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for watching us. Happy holiday.